Welcome to the Beauty and Battle podcast, where we talk about winning in marriage by waging a war. I'm Jason Benham. I've got my girlfriend slash wife, Tori Benham, with me, and we are here to talk to you about how Satan tries to get you to fight face-to-face with your spouse, but God designed you to fight shoulder-to-shoulder against Satan so that you can win in your marriage. Fighting together draws you together. We cannot wait to jump in. So here we go. So Tori and I are broadcasting um, in our hotel room in Austin, Texas at the Driscoll Hotel. So we are actually on Zoom. So that's why probably our audio sounds a little different than normal. Mm-hmm. But I'm this is so fun. Yeah. It's a total different, different vibe for us. You know, hotel. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. Tori and I are sitting next to each other. She's actually wearing her rope. <laughs> Maybe we should get a picture of this. This is full vacay mode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but today. What we want to talk about is the power of kindness in your marriage. Now, I mean, obviously, we can so easily take it for granted the importance of being kind to our spouses, right? But recent research, and this is what I I have totally discovered. I I wigged out and I geeked out on this this um, article that I read uh, in science. I forget exactly where it was, but it, it talked about brain science behind kindness. And it says that recent research has shown the power that simple kindness has on your physical, mental, emotional, and relational health. Yeah. And the crazy thing is, is like, it's only been in like the last 20 years that science has been able to show us these things like brain science. Mm -hmm. It's, it's relatively new. And now we're seeing all these awesome things that brain science can show us. And when because we, they have these scans that can actually right. watch the brain respond to different aspects of living, right? And so yeah. they watch the brain as it's, it comes in contact with kindness, how it responds when it initiates kindness. And yeah. it's just really cool how God designed us. Uh, you guys are going to geek out on this. I'm telling you, whenever I, I share with you d- the actual science, and I, I'm going to be quoting from Dr. Bawani. Bala Moody. She even just sounds smart. Uh, If it's a girl, I don't know how that all works. But um, Tori and I, you know, we've talked a ton about gratitude and what gratitude does is it releases oxytocin and that's a bonding chemical. But what we want to focus in on today is focus in on uh, kindness. Hmm. The way that it affects you is absolutely fascinating. And since marriage is your primary relationship, it's going to be uber important to incorporate kindness Uh, into your relationship and let it be the hallmark. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about three aspects of kindness. We're going to talk about the brain science behind it and how it affects you. And then we're going to give you four building blocks of kindness. But before we do that, Tori has found a really awesome love song. What is it? Yes. So thanks to Allie Grace Benham, we have this amazing song that we came across this week. Allie, our, how old is Allie now? She's 17. No, 19. 19. Our 19 year old. Um, sent me this song and she's like, this is the best song. And I had never heard of Brandon Lake before. Oh, Brandon now. Lake you, is awesome. You you had heard of yeah, him? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm terrible with names. I, pro- I probably have heard him a lot and just didn't realize it was Brandon Lake, but he's a worship singer and he played for Ma- Maverick City. I'm not sure if he still is, but um, has some amazing love songs. Yeah. And this is one, he, he has a whole album of love songs and this one is on that album. It's called um, Good Night. For now, and I'm going to play just a little snippet of it for you guys. Smell your skin, hold me right in, lost in your wonder, immediate love, taste of your kid, strawberry lips. He's got a good voice. He does. Emotional thunder. Stay here forever. I can never leave. It gets too hard for me to say goodnight. There you go, Tori. It's hard to say goodnight when you're in love. <laughs> we don't want it to end. <laughs> Tori and I are going to start making out. <laughs> I feel like my heart is bleeding from the inside out. Goodnight. That's he really has an good. amazing voice. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So what's the name of it again? Good Night for Now by Brandon Lake. Okay. Dan- dance with your spouse in your bedroom to that one because it might lead to something really good. <laughs> Should I press pause right now on our 
podcast. Oh my word. <laughs> Stop. Okay, so let's dive into this. I said we're going to talk about three aspects of kindness, the brain science behind it, and then four building blocks for kindness because we need it in our relationship. Okay, so the three aspects of kindness. Okay, doing kindness, receiving kindness, seeing kindness. Hmm. Doing, receiving, seeing. And what's crazy that I never knew was that your brain responds the same way to all three. Wow. So your brain responds when you have done kindness for somebody. Yep when you've received kindness from somebody or when you see someone else showing kindness, yeah, your brain starts going when I into read that, I, It is so true. Like I, I probably uh, several times a week say out loud, I love nice people. <laughs> right. <laughs> because there's something about yeah. when people are kind that you're like, oh, it just is a warm and yeah, good, feel good feeling. It's a, yeah. It, you respond to it. You're like, oh, Thank, thank God for nice people. Like sometimes on the road yeah. when there are people who, you know, just are like, you go ahead, go ahead. Like they're looking at you and they're smiling. Like, oh, I love nice people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I know. Right. But now let me say this real quick. Here's a key. Um, kindness is not the same thing as being nice. <clears throat> uh, and the difference is depth. So nice people are polite mm. out of obligation, but kind people comes from a genuine compassion. It comes from the inside out. Mm. They've got a compassionate mind toward others. So kind people are nice, but not all nice people are kind. Ooh. So if you think about that in the scripture, it says the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Hmm. And what, what that scripture is talking about is like the people who believe that we should do everything in our power to save the whales, but they think it's okay to abort babies. Yeah. It's like, okay, so it's kind to the whales, but in reality, it's cruel because you think it's okay to, to kill innocent human beings, but you want to save the whales. So kindness is deeper hmm. than niceness. So yeah, you want to be nice. I mean, that's that's included in kindness. But you want to go deeper than that from where where kindness comes from a genuine desire and inside out compassion toward others. Now, in marriage, if you want the full benefit, don't just be nice, you've got to be genuinely kind. Okay, now let's jump into the brain science. And then we're going to talk about the four building blocks. So brain science when you do kind things, when you receive kind kindness from somebody, or when you see someone else doing kindness. So remember, do receive see. Okay, studies show. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna read verbatim from this article that I was reading in, in some psychological magazine, but it's gonna yeah. I'm gonna read directly from this. All right, studies show that kindness increases self-esteem, empathy, compassion, improves mood, increases connectivity with others, helps you get over depression and anxiety. But physiologically, kindness positively changes your brain. Hmm. Now, listen to this direct quote right here. Being kind boosts serotonin and dopamine, which are neurotransmitters in the brain that give you feelings of satisfaction and well-being and cause the pleasure reward centers in your brain to light up. Endorphins, which are your brain's natural painkiller, also can be released. Now, just think about this. An endorphin. An endorphin is that 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 chemical that's released inside of your body when you go through something painful, mm. but you experience peace on the other side. Yes. Every, so, every mom who's had a child can relate to this. Yeah. That's what like I, that is when it's at its peak is when you've had a baby and you've been through the most intense pain of your entire life. And then they it's over. It is over. Yeah. The baby is out and on your chest and there is no feeling like it. Yes. Um, I've felt a twinge of it in CrossFit yeah. where you go through the pain of a workout that's super intense and then you collapse to the floor yeah. and you feel that Incredible. In endorphin rush, right? But it's nothing compared to having, yeah, a, having baby. a baby. Mm -hmm. And it, it's also called the runner's high, you know, when runners run marathons and then it gets really hard around 13 or 14 miles and then they bust through it and the miles 16 through 26 aren't nearly as bad because it's the runner's high. Your body is released endorphins, which gives you peace. Um, through pain. And the only way to get those endorphins is to go through something difficult and to push yourself through it. Now, being kind isn't always easy, but when you do it, it releases endorphins in your body. Hmm. Like that person that you really don't want to be kindness, kind to, be kind to them. Do that difficult thing mm. and your body will release endorphins and it will bring health and healing to your physical body. Wow. Is that not yeah, crazy? Yeah, that is crazy. And peace through pain. It is it is truly a, rem a remarkable thing. I remember um, with our, so with Trey, I didn't have an epidural, so I felt the pain of childbirth, oh, yeah. right? And then um, I was like, can never feel that pain again. I will never <laughs> be able to feel that pain again. And so with yeah. Allie, 
um, I was, I had to be induced. And I said at four centimeters, I wasn't even barely yeah. feeling pain. Give me the epidural. Give I don't, I can't take the risk of feeling that pain again. Yeah. Well, it ended up being actually a really tough recovery because yeah. I didn't feel the pain before, before you had to yeah, feel it after. Exactly. And so after I had Lundy, because I had not felt any pain in her, in her delivery, I had the most intense afterbirth and it felt like I was having a baby yeah. all over again with, you know, at home with a, a newborn and a toddler. And I remember talking to different people. I'm like, what is happening? This is crazy. And they said, well, sometimes when your body hasn't worked up the endorphins, when you haven't had pain, then you, you, it, that's what happens after you have had your the baby. body. Your is, body. Yeah, you have actually it, go do. Yeah. That. Like after, when you've had a, ba when you've had the, the pain of labor, then afterwards you don't feel it wow. nearly as much. So it's really an that's interesting really thing. And so it's like that balance of, okay, yeah. I'm going to have to feel some of this pain. Yeah, but Tori and I still to this day, even after Allie, we we didn't go and put a blow up swimming pool in our living room and try to deliver a baby that. Oh, way. And, yeah, <laughs> we're we're straight hospital you, people. You you mamas out there that do that are super, super hero, wow. heroes. Okay, so let me. Uh, this child psychiatrist, Doctor Bawani Balamudi, said, "Listen to what listen to what she said. One of the most important things that happens when you do kind things receive." or see kindness is that it releases oxytocin, a neurotransmitter that's been studied extensively for its role in promoting a sense of bonding, right? So being nice draws you close. We've talked about gratitude does that. Being nice also does that, but not just being nice, but showing kindness. Research shows that kindness can be also be cardioprotective. Get this, let's talk about your heart, that kindness can positively affect your heart. It can decrease blood pressure, and cortisol, a stress hormone, which directly impacts stress levels. Oxytocin releases nitric oxide. This is really getting mm. scientific stuff. Nitric oxide dilates your blood vessels and thereby reduces your blood pressure and improves your heart health. Wow. All from kindness. Mm. But she's not done yet. She also said, there's also research looking at oxytocin and its effect on reducing inflammation. Wow. Reducing inflammation in some ways protects you from the chronic diseases like obesity, diabetes, and cancer. So kindness actually reduces inflammation. Wow. I mean, and inflammation is like the big thing now. Mm -hmm. Everybody's trying to get rid of yeah. inflammation because we realize how bad that is for you. Who needs turmeric? Right. Be well, kind. You just be kind. Right. <laughs> but now, and I love this because now we see how that affects us personally. Um, and so talking about us personally, this doctor goes on and says that you don't need to forget the importance of self-kindness. Hmm. She said wow. this. It's very important to be kind to yourself because we are all living in a highly competitive society and we're constantly comparing ourselves to others and putting ourselves down. Yeah. We often engage in negative self-talk and that leads to negative feelings and negative emotions. This in turn can lead to anxiety and depression. Hmm. And what she advocates is using the good neighbor rule. Okay. When it comes to self-kindness, she said, treat yourself as you would treat your neighbor Wow. with kindness, respect, and love. If you wouldn't say it to your good neighbor, don't say it to yourself. Wow. Is that not That's good? a really good point. That So that self-kindness, and, and it reminds me of Jesus's commandment when he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself, which mm. means that self-love comes before neighborly love. Yeah. And it's not falling in love with yourself, but it's actually not giving into negative thoughts that Satan puts into your mind, those accusatory thoughts mm -hmm. that go negative against yourself. So you got to be kind to yourself, mm -hmm. be kind to your spouse, be kind to other people. And then, especially when you've got kids, it's like, so the, the, the science shows that our brains release all of these awesome, healthy, life-giving chemicals in our body that help us emotionally, help us mentally, help us physically, and help us relationally. It releases it when we do kind things, when we receive kind things, or even when we see people doing kind things. So as parents, we do nice things for each other. Mm. That's releasing great chemicals in our kids' brains when they see us being kind to each other. Wow. Yeah, that's amazing. And I just think about the whole concept of, you know, thinking about what you're thinking about. I, most of our thoughts are subconscious thoughts. So we're not really aware of what we're thinking. And this is where it is so important to to have that, that self-awareness to pause and to think, what am I thinking about? Yeah. Because if you're not being kind to yourself, most of the time it's subconscious thinking. Yeah. And you have to bring those thoughts 
um, conscious so that you can manage them so that you can change them. So it's like, what am I actually thinking about myself? I feel negative. I feel hard on myself, but what are the actual thoughts that I'm thinking Mm -hmm. that are leading to, to not treating myself kindly? And maybe it's journaling it down or talking it through with your spouse, but you kind of have to, to get those subconscious thoughts conscious in order to manage them. That's actually a perfect segue for us to go from from the three aspects of kindness, which is doing kindness, receiving kindness, and seeing kindness, from the brain science that we just researched into the four building blocks of kindness. Okay, so there's lots of different ways to be kind, but what I did was I boiled it down into four building blocks, four things, components that today you can start implementing into your marriage so that your relationship can experience the powerful benefits of kindness. Okay. Here the I'm going to give you the four, and then we're going to go back and look at each one of them. Considerate, being considerate, helpful, thoughtful, respectful. Mm. You want to show kindness to your spouse? Be considerate, be helpful, be thoughtful, be respectful. Let's start with considerate. Um, considerate is very simple. It's summed up in three words. You before me. Mm. You before me. Right? The, the key is put your spouse before yourself. Yeah. What is it that your spouse needs? What is it that your spouse would like? You know, you want to go to dinner. Where does your spouse want to go? It's being considerate is simply you before me. If I'm starving hungry and I'm ready to dive into the food, but then Tori hasn't uh, finished with their last uh, minute preparations for the, for the meal or whatever. Well, I can grab my plate and go sit at the table and start munching on myself or by myself, or I can actually be considerate. I can think, you know what? I need to think about her needs. She would probably like to eat with me rather than eating alone. Hmm. So how about I stop and I wait for her? That's what considerate is. Considering others. Yeah. Consider others. Okay. So that's the three words, you before me. So be considerate. Number two, be helpful. Be helpful. This is all about joining your spouse and carrying their load. Hmm. So the idea behind helpfulness is assisting them in their responsibilities. It's not your responsibilities. Yeah. It's figuring out what are they responsible for and then help them with it. Mm. Like, so Tori, you guys all know that Tori makes all these really great things and she cooks and she bakes and she does all this. And you know what? In all honesty, she takes responsibility for doing that stuff and cleaning it up, um, cleaning the kitchen up after it's done. But then if I'm around... That's one of the things that I'm always looking for. I'm like, okay, so you're doing all this bread stuff right now. Let me clean the bowls. Yeah. And just being helpful is kindness from me to her. So now my brain is releasing all these healthy chemicals. And then it's her receiving kindness from me just because I'm being helpful. And now her brain is receiving, is, is releasing all of these healthy chemicals. And then if my kids see us doing this, if our kids watch us doing this and then their brains are releasing healthy chemicals. So now we have a whole house full of kindness and a whole house full of healthy people. Yeah. And one thing that I love that you say to our kids all the time is the best way you can say thank you is to help. Yeah. Right. So yeah. mom just made dinner. The best way we can thank her is to help clean yeah, it up. Get in and do something, suckers. <laughs> and it's funny because, um, you know, you guys have heard us talk about the five love languages and one of those love languages is acts of service. And that was never my top love language, but it has become, as I've taken the test more recently, it's more towards the top. It's like my second one now. And I think that's because, um, you know, as a mom, just the the endless lists, right? Mm -hmm. You stepping in and helping makes me feel so loved and it takes so much pressure off and it makes me able to love better, right? Because I'm like, okay, like, I, I don't have so much on my plate. And so this whole being helpful, wow, it's it really is the best way that you can yeah. say thank you to your spouse is to jump in and help. So that's the first two components. The first two building blocks, pillars of kindness is one, be considerate. Number two, be helpful. Number three, be thoughtful. Mm. Thoughtful. Thoughtful. Being thoughtful is mentally processing what your spouse needs and doing it without being asked. Okay. You've got to, being thoughtful is mentally process what they would want or need and then do it without being asked. Mm -hmm. And I love this because when I was reading the book, Marriage on the Rock by Jimmy Evans, he defined romance. Like if you want to be a romantic, he defined romance as fulfilling an unspoken need or desire in your spouse. 
Wow. So, and I narrowed that down. There's three components to being romantic. One, it's recognizing your spouse has unspoken needs or desires. And two, or so so that's the two components. I said three. And two, it's fulfilling those things. Mm. So it's un- <laughs> unspoken need or desire in your spouse and doing those things without them having to ask. And that's what thoughtful people do. Yeah, that's really good. I'm thinking of a thoughtful thing I could do for you when I get home is clean out the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah. I hate cleaning out the refrigerator. Yeah, but a helpful thing that I can do is clean it out With so me? you don't have to. Oh, we can both practice kindness and do it together. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> so that's be you got to be considerate, be helpful, be thoughtful, which if you're a thoughtful person, you can turn into a romantic really quick. And then finally, number 4, be respectful. So I looked up a definition of respectful. Listen to this and when you hear this definition, think about applying this to your spouse. A feeling of deep admiration for someone or something elicited by their abilities, qualities, or achievements. Mm. So think about your spouse's abilities. Think about their qualities and think about their achievements. And then think about that so deeply that you have a feeling of deep admiration for Mm. them. That's what respect is. That's really good. And I think the key word again is think. Yeah, Allow you yourself to think on these things. You know, that verse, whatever's true, whatever's lovely, whatever is honest, whatever is pure. Um, if it if there be any virtue and if there yeah. be any praise, think on these things. Yeah, um, that's good. It's it's such an important verse to live by. Yeah. So there we go. There's think your, on these things. There's your four building blocks of kindness. Be considerate, be helpful, be thoughtful, be respectful. And if you incorporate that into your relationship, not only... Does it help you? Not only does it help your spouse, but it helps the people who see you being kind to your spouse, especially for our kids. Isn't that cool? That's really, really good. It's very motivating to be kind because yeah, I know. God rewards kindness. I know. <laughs> Imagine being kind to the store clerk when things don't go your way, you know, and and the natural, typical person would get, get really mad. Yeah. You know, just think about being kind in that moment, what it does for them. Yeah. It releases positive chemicals in their brain, Mm. you know, and God uses that to heal them. So good. So you have a recipe for us? Yes, I do. So I told you guys that we ate terrible, right? Over the holidays and we're very motivated to get back into healthy eating. Although we did eat a (laughs) box of Thin Mints last night before. But they were the healthy ones from from Whole Foods. (laughs) Yeah, but the whole box. (laughs) Oh, we're trying. We're It was, we we were planning on starting January 1, but then we had this anniversary trip, which we kind of doubled when Jason's, yeah. uh, he had a, had to speak at a real estate conference. And so we doubled, doubled the trip as a anniversary trip. And we got here and we were doing pretty well for like a day and a half. And we're like, but it's our anniversary. Let's do this. <laughs> so then we ordered uh, our chocolate cake room service. And then we stopped at Whole Foods and got these, have you guys heard of Simple Mills? Mills, it's they have like crackers and cookies um, at Whole Foods, and it's supposed to be like decently healthy. Didn't you know, April Stinson tell you? April about Stinson that? Sh- sent me shout that. out. Yeah, shout out to April for sending me a recipe with these nutter butters from Simple Mills, and I it was like forget the recipe. I just want those those nutter butters. My yeah. dad used to love yeah. nutter butters, oh, and yeah. that nutter was like great. that was a, a core memory for me growing up eating nutter butters dipped in, in milk with dad at wow. the kitchen counter. Yeah, <laughs> we did it, <laughs> and um, so anyways. What was it? Where was I going? Recipe, 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 recipe. And so we're trying to eat healthy. Um, we're 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 moseying into healthy eating. Yeah, sure. And so, but last week or the week after Christmas, I woke up not feeling great at all, coming down with a cold. And I, everybody and their mother is getting like RSV, stomach bug, yeah. um, pneumonia. I'm just hearing so many people are getting sick. It's so sad. And so, anyways, I came across um, the medicine ball dupe from Starbucks. And everybody has kind of like their own rendition. There's like a zillion of them out there right now. But Starbucks medicine ball, I've actually never had it, but because the reason I haven't is because it doesn't make sense to me that you would you would drink 30 grams of sugar when you're fighting a cold or you're fighting sickness. Yeah. And the whole idea of a medicine, the medicine ball is it's got vitamin, it's got like vitamin C and, and all these things in it that's supposed to be really good for you. But then yeah, but they Starbucks but then tries they, to make it taste good. So yeah. you buy it. So they, they add all the sugar. Exactly. They include all 30 grams of sugar, which is completely counterproductive to what you're trying to do, build your immune system because sugar breaks down your immune system. So yeah. 
Um, anyways, came across different recipes and I found one that I tried and it's basically just like a ton of lemons, which is so much vitamin C yeah. ginger, which is an anti-inflammatory, really good for you. Coconut water, local honey. And I think that's it. Uh, anyways, I'll share you, share with you the recipe and you basically put everything in a blender and you don't, the awesome thing about this recipe is it is so easy. You don't have to peel the lemons. You're literally blending the whole lemon with uh -huh. the peel and the ginger. You just kind of wash, you wash everything really good, but you don't have to peel everything. You just kind of get the bad spots off, throw it in the blender, put it in ice cube trays. And then, um, you, you know, freeze that. And then when you want a medicine ball tea drink, you just brew some mint tea and Jake, our middle son, or our second son, middle child, um, for Christmas bought me Tazo organic mint tea. He knows me very well. He knows <laughs> I love tea. And so he got me, and that's that's the tea that they recommend. It's really good. So you brew some um, organic mint tea, throw in a cube of the medicine ball, frozen you know, cubes, and I drank, so I started coming down with something. I drank that a couple times a day and I honestly, I fought it really, really well. I did yeah. some other things too. I did this, uh, silver water. I always feel like that helps a lot. And, um, and then basically this tea, I was just drinking it nonstop and I, it never turned into anything major. It was just pretty easy going. I think I fought it in like three or four days. You didn't even get it. Yeah. I, I didn't do anything and I never got <laughs> <laughs> So I don't know what that is. Uh, I think it was just the medicine ball brewing in our house. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so anyways, I'll share that recipe with you guys. Um, great to have on. And I think it's just like a great thing to have on hand. Um, if somebody in the house is sick, you can make them some medicine ball tea. And it's, I think just that kindness itself it, it yeah, is it's healing. It's a kind thing to do. <laughs> uh -huh. So anyway, there we go. That's kindness. So be kind, guys. Be Be considerate. Be helpful. Be thoughtful. Be respectful. Find ways that you can do that for your spouse. And then thank us later. How about that? How about it? <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. We'll see you soon. Bye.